Distance time graphs are amazing because they represent incredible journeys just with a very simple graph and some lines. Let's explore distance time graphs. We have distance going up on the y-axis, in this case in kilometers, and we have time always going across on the x-axis, in this case in terms of hours. And what we have here, even though it only looks like a few little lines, is a very interesting journey. Let's look at the question though. The distance time graph shows Edward jogging to an internet cafe, browsing the web, and then walking to a friend's house. Write down how long he stayed at the internet cafe in minutes. Well, let's explore this graph. So it started off at one o'clock. And what's happening along this line? Well, the distance is increasing. That means he's going somewhere further away from where he started with. In this case, he's jogging to an internet cafe. But what happens here at about 1.30? And I can tell it's 1.30 because it's halfway between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock. What happens? The distance stops changing. He stays at 6 kilometers away from where he started for a long time. What's happening? That's him staying still. Basically, whenever you arrive at a destination and then stop, the distance time graph will go flat because you've stayed at one place. You're not getting any further or less away from where you started with. So the question actually is, how long did he stay at the internet cafe? Well, if this flat line represents him staying at the internet cafe, we just need to work out how much time has gone by. So it started at 1.30 and ended at 3 o'clock. So 1.30 to 2.30, that's an hour, and then another half an hour. So he stayed for an hour and a half at the internet cafe. But the question was, how long did he stay in minutes? What's an hour and a half in minutes? An hour is 60 minutes. Half an hour is 30 minutes. So an hour and a half is 60 plus 30 or 90 minutes. So the answer to the first question is 90 minutes. Whenever you have a flat line, that means the person has stopped at the same place. What about the next question? Write down Edward's speed when he was jogging in kilometers per hour. To work out speed, we need our incredible triangle. Now this triangle you need to absolutely know off by heart and it's called the distance time speed triangle. There it is, let's put it in the bottom left. Distance, speed and time triangle. Really important to remember, you have the distance on the top. Many students put the speed at the top, but it's the distance that goes at the top. Let's just keep changing the color until we get a nice one that we like. Distance goes at the top, not speed. Then below we have speed times by time. Speed multiplied by time. There it is, speed multiplied by time. So there's our distance, speed, time triangle. How would we even use this triangle though? Well, for example, if we wanted to work out the distance, we would do speed multiplied by time. Always just cover up the one that you're looking for. So we're looking for distance, so cover that up, and you've got speed times time. In this question though, we're looking for speed. So let's cover that up and we have a distance divided by time. To find the speed, you do distance divided by time. Finally, if we're looking for time, we could do, we cover it up and we do distance divided by speed. But in this question, we're looking for speed. So speed equals distance divided by time. What was his distance when he was jogging? Well, his distance was from zero to six. So his distance was six kilometers six kilometers. What was his time? Well, his time was half an hour. 
Now here's the number one mistake students make. They write divide by 30 because it's 30 minutes. But the question was kilometers per hour. So if we did 60 divide by 6 divide by 30, first of all that's quite a hard calculation to do. But even if we had a calculator and we typed that out, you get something like 0 0.2, which is a crazy uh, speed to have. That's that's barely even moving 0 0.2 kilometers per hour. The reason why that's a mistake is because that is 30 minutes from 1:30 uh, from 1 until 1:30 keep it in terms of hours keep it in terms of hours because the question is kilometers per hour what is 30 minutes in terms of hours it's half an hour so we don't write 30 we, we write 0 0.5 just to recap we're looking for the speed write down Edward's speed when he was jogging we use our triangle, which we need to memorize, distance, speed, time, and we found out that speed equals distance divided by time. Distance divided by time. We worked out the distance was six kilometers, and we worked out the time was half an hour. We wrote a half instead of 30 minutes because we're keeping it in kilometers per hour, and 30 minutes is half an hour. Distance divided by time, so six divided by 0 0.5. There's many different ways of working out 6 divided by 0 0.5, but I think one you might like is simply getting rid of the decimal by times in by 2. So times by 2 to the top and times by 2 to the bottom. And as if by magic, we have 12 now, because 6 times 2 is 12, and 1 at the bottom. A half times 2 is 1. We haven't changed the fraction, we've just made it easier for ourselves by doing the same thing to the top and the bottom. 12 divided by 1 is 12. So Edward's speed when he was jogging was 12 kilometers per hour. There we are. Finally, Edward stayed at his friend's house for half an hour, then biked home, arriving at five o'clock. Complete the distance time graph. Again, a very typical question in the exam. First of all, he stayed at his friend's house for half an hour, what was my advice about when you're staying in one place and what that looks like on the distance time graph? When you're staying in one place, it becomes a flat line. So what we need to do is do a flat line lasting for half an hour. So from 4 until 4.30. We can tell that reaches 4.30 because on a grid it would go straight up from 4.30 started at 4 o'clock and goes to 4.30, that's half an hour. Then he biked home, arriving at 5 o'clock. Many students get confused about this bit and, and they're like, how on earth would I complete that diagram? I don't know what it looks like. Well, we do know he arrives home at 5 o'clock. So we don't even need to work out the speed. We simply join up the end of him being at his friend's house to arriving home at 5 o'clock. And home is, of course, back where he started. So you're going back to zero. And that has completed the distance time graph. If you ask something like, how far has he traveled in total? We could simply say 12 kilometers going there and 12 kilometers coming back. So 24 kilometers in total. But in all of these questions, what was incredibly useful was knowing this triangle, the speed distance time triangle. And I would recommend finding a way to memorize that. Some students like this one. Don't stop trying. DST, distance, speed, time. Don't stop trying. Speed equals distance divided by time.